All right, nice. So welcome to Forex Fridays with Deontay. I hope everybody had a great trading week. I know this week was NFP, but I got some things in tune for you guys so you can see that certain models still work out during, you know, very volatile environments. So we're going to be talking about our weekly range review. So, you know, it's an NFP week. We're going to talk about high probability scalping via daily chart, you know, using daily momentum. And then we're going to talk about pair correlation. So some of the things that we can see happening around IPTA for April and the current price action and price action that we're seeing right now for the new month. So let's take a look at the chart. And the first thing we're going to look at is the DXY. So this is our weekly range review. I like to show it from a hourly perspective. Good morning. Welcome to those joining. So you got all the session indicators here. You can see all the dead zones, right? So this is the only indicator that I would truly use. You know, I'm only using indicators that, you know, make things a little short cutish, like, you know, saves me time. I don't have to mark up where the kill zone is or where certain, you know, parameters that I'm looking for appear. So you can see this weekly opening price. This is Sunday's opening price. So tomato, tomato, it's the same thing. So SOP is, you know, the acronym SOP, Sunday's opening price. This is our natural flow of overbought and oversold. We don't need an indicator to tell you this. The price itself will always tell you. It's always indicating to you. It's up to the operator. It's up to the trader to understand what the market is showing us. And we definitely understand that the weekly opening price is influential to where overbought and oversold is. Just looking at the chart, we can see where the best sells are occurring and where the best buys are occurring. It's ideal to find a sell in a premium. It's ideal to find a buy in a discount. And we can see Tuesday makes the high of the week and Thursday makes the low of the week. you got a classic bearish weekly profile here. So since this weekly candle closed lower, and we know it closes lower because what? It's below its opening price. So it closed down. So if we were to take off all the annotations, go on the weekly chart, you can see this week was down. It opened. It ran up. Think about look at Look at what you're seeing here. Apologies. Look at what you're seeing here. Price is running up and then going short. That's that Tuesday high. That's that Thursday low. And that's that Friday pullback. Going hourly again. Look at it. Same thing. Tuesday high up. Thursday low. Friday pullback. That's what we saw. Very classic week you would like to trade. It's nice to see that it happens on a Tuesday. So Tuesday runs Monday's high. So we're getting a high broken in a premium territory. So price comes up, takes out that high, and then sells off. It grabbed what? Buy side liquidity and then went short. And they continue to trend lower. It continued to take out what? Previous daily lows. So after that, after taking out this one previous daily high, the market created what? A turning point. Look at that. It went from breaking a high to now breaking lows. Yeah, potentially observing a swing high. I mean, that's what you are looking at. This is a swing high formation just transcribed on the one hour from daily. Right. The thought process is that Tuesday's high is higher than Monday's high. And Wednesday's high is lower than Tuesday's high. So this is the swing high. Tuesday was a swing high. Look at the daily chart. Tuesday should be that swing high. There it is. Look at Tuesday. One, two, three. That's that swing formation right there. A potential top to the market. Right? If the market is going to turn around, it's going to turn around in three bars, normally three days. We see that all the time. If the market is going to change any direction, whether it's up or down, it only takes the market makers three days to do it. Because we can see the swing points form in three days. Look at this low point here. It happens in three days. One, two, three. What does the market do? It goes from breaking buy, sell side, right, the previous daily low, and then the following day, it doesn't run lows anymore. It runs the high. 
So there was a change in trend potentially here. Bullish momentum is possibly picking up in these swing points. One, two, three. And you can see after making that swing point, it continues to trend higher. Same thing's happening here. This swing high. This could be a new trend that's unfolding lower potentially. But that's what you're seeing here on the one hour. right? All that detail is shown here on the hourly. And as you go lower and lower, you'll see a lot more detail in the market. But just that premise, that's the swing high. The top. Wednesday. Tuesday's low is broken by Wednesday, so Wednesday continues trading lower. What does Thursday do? Thursday takes out. Wednesday's low. Who's here? Wednesday's low. And then Friday takes out. Thursday's high. So you got a pullback. But look at this inefficiency, right? It pulled right back into what? This. Pulled right into that. And might what? Continue going short. That's the premise right now, so far. But not to get too far ahead of ourselves. That's our weekly profile. If it's going to go lower, any week that you think, right, you arrive, you're coming off for a weekend, and you're about to jump into a new week, if you think that the weekly candle at said point is going to close lower from its open by Friday, you're looking for the high of the week to form on mainly these four days, potentially. But if you had to break it down, more specifically, Tuesday and Wednesday is where you want it to form. It can happen throughout the, the entire week, right? The high could be Sunday, and then it continues selling off. We've seen weeks like that before. We've seen weeks where Monday's the high, or Tuesday's the high, or Wednesday's the high, or even potentially Thursday, and it's like very whipsaw, right? Thursday comes straight down, and then Friday pulls back, and it closes off like that. But be aware, if you're going in, general rule of thumb, if you're bearish for the week, Look to sell above the opening price for the week and look to sell after probably rating a previous daily high and trading on a ideal trading day, Tuesday, Wednesday. And yes, sometimes Monday, not saying it's not, but sometimes Monday too. So just keep that in mind. Same thing. Everything I'm saying is vice versa. If you're bullish, if you're bullish, go into that weekly profile and think that it's going to form maybe Tuesday low. And then it runs up Thursday high, comes back, sells, end of the week, and any of those other ideal conditions. So let's move on to AU. So AU, we're going to go into our kill zone models, the ones that I prefer to use, and the ones that I use to be successful trading. So pay close attention. We're going to talk about the London model. We're adding a bonus in tonight's Forex Friday, so I decided to add it to Asian model. So we look at that too. Right, Asian model for AUs is going to be very interesting. So keep your eyes sharp and be attentive. So just look at the chart again. Take this off the chart. It looks like nothing almost, right? It just looks like the market's going up. But when you put that line on that chart, it makes a little more sense. You're like, okay, wow. They pulled it down below the origin point, the starting point of the week, and brought below it and pushed it up. And that whole formation of price going up and then going down, they could have gotten traders long on Sunday, chasing price. And then they went short, knock out all their stops. Anybody that went long, they're knocked out. And now they're getting all the retail traders to probably flip sides and go short on Monday. And they go heavily short on Monday. You know, let me chase price going down. It's going to continue going into Tuesday. Tuesday turns around. All right? Get stuck in a paradigm. Ch traders are always chasing. Do not chase price. Be methodical, be structural, be objective. So London models, take a look. So we see the low of the week happens on Monday. See that? It happens on Monday, not Tuesday or Wednesday. Happens here on a Monday. So understand that those things can happen too. So the London model is going to be utilizing a dead zone. And a dead zone is essentially a period that I don't want to trade because the market is most likely going to go into a phase of accumulation or consolidation or a deep retracement. I don't want to deal with that. That's the dead zone. So we got this to this. Oh, let me see some. Somebody says on the chat.
Ah, welcome, man. I'm definitely a forex nerd for sure. Appreciate you. Yeah, I, I support. I support every fellow trader here. Like, I want everybody to win. At the end of the day, thank you for joining, guys. Your time is very valuable to me. So the London model for AU. This is on Monday too, right? Not a day I would trade, but we're gonna show it anyway because repetition is just gonna get us more experience and getting familiar with the model. This is midnight to 2 a.m. This is the Asian lunch or dead zone, Asian dead zone, right? And this is going to be 12 a.m. to 2 a.m. I'm framing everything off of a 15-minute time frame. And this is London kill zone. And this is 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. I start my London kill zone at 2 a.m. I know some people started at 1 a.m. And we're, we're referring to mainly ICT content material. I know some people might say, oh, London is actually not 1 a.m. on the official, you know, babypips.com or um, some other website that shows the structural kill zones or sessions because we know these sessions are actually overextended. There's a lot of overlapping with all these sessions. But if you learn it from the lens of ICT, we know that it's very specific time periods inside those sessions. We're looking for the unbroken swing highs and swing lows that form inside this dead zone. That's how we're going to frame a setup here. Now, we're also going to blend something here. What are we going to blend? We're going to blend that Sunday's opening price, that weekly opening price. We're going to use that to gauge whether or not we should be looking for longs or shorts, depending on where price is during this time period and what side of the market it rates. So we have buy side here. And we have buy side here. And we have sell side. We don't take this as sell side. Why? Can someone ask answer this in the chat? Why don't we take this as sell side? All right, I want to engage you guys. I don't want you guys to be bored just listening to me. Anybody in the chat, right or wrong, doesn't matter. Why would we not take this sell side liquidity pool? It's been swept. Thank you. It's been swept. So price has swept this swing low already. So we're not going to take it. So we're not using it. Point blank period. We got the opening price here. I'm telling you, this is gold. Pay attention. This is 2 a.m. It's the opening price. New York Eastern Standard Time. This is Sunday's opening price, though. So this bottom line here is Sunday's opening price. Let's just put that on the chart so we're clean and concise. Sunday's opening price. SOP. Right? That's the acronym. Let's play it forward to see what happens. Now, I know... Other people may say also, what about midnight's opening price? Okay, fair enough. Let's be even more transparent, right? How, how many more confluences do we need? This is midnight opening price. That's 12 a.m. for the day. We'll put 12 a.m. as that. 12 a.m. So we have some. We're cheap already for the day. Going into the week right now, where it, at, where it is currently at, it's in a premium for the kill zone and the weekly profile. Play it forward. Price runs up takes out what a swing high formation right here price takes out a swing high formation at this point buy side has been taken the fact that buy side is taken we can look on the one minute time frame to potentially look for a shorting opportunity because price is above the kill zone open premium right the time period two to five the opening price of that kill zone it's above it it's a premium it's overbrought it's currently now overbrought sunday's opening price it is still below, as you can see, 12 a.m.'s opening price. But we're still going to watch this and stalk it and see what happens. So let's watch it. Is there any fair value gap that forms to the downside that sweeps a swing low? No. You don't see anything like that. So we keep playing. And right here, we finally get a swing low. Here. Favorite value gap runs to it. So that's the entry idea. It's always been the entry idea that I try to enforce every single time we talk about entering the market. How do I enter the market? It looks like this. This is how this is my pathway to get into the market when I see this sequence. It looks just like that. Now I know sometimes it may look a little different, but they're all in the same formation. It's a speed to the downside and that speed has to be 
running through a swing point, and the swing point needs to be inside the speed point. Fair value gap. And we would look for a shorting opportunity. Now, the only thing I would say about this setup is that it's below 12 a.m.'s opening price. So that's the only conflict we have. We have double confluence for the kill zone being overbrought and Sunday's opening price being overbrought. We don't have it for the day yet. Let's play it forward, see what happens. So you can see price. Let's zoom in here. Price on the next candle literally taps it and goes short. It re retraces a little bit inside of it again. Let's keep playing it forward. We go into some drawdown. Price gets above 12, 12 a.m.'s opening price here. And this is the end of the kill zone here. So at the, at said point, this is the end of the kill, kill zone. However, we would still be holding that trade. It's not like we abandoned the trade. We would still hold the trade because we haven't been stopped out. And we can see how price comes back down. But notice, it gauged itself. Look how look how it engineered everything. Now, I know many people say, oh, you, you're probably cherry picking or it's it's hindsight in this six and the third. And you didn't catch that setup yourself. No, I did not catch the setup myself. However, it's not something that we're unfamiliar with because not any day you should be looking and framing your days like this, at least. This is how I frame mine to find success. And you can see how it goes short. But I needed to wait for everything to line up. I need everything to line up. Now, someone said in the chat, yeah, I did change the model, right? Entry. The entry technique, if you go on the YouTube channel, you'll see if you watch the New York model video or the Asian session model video, it was just the first fair value gap that forms after breaking the swing point and being in a premium or discount. So this still aligns with the entry idea, but you'll see other examples many times where I, I show you guys like, oh, this is also the old entry technique. It's just a fair value gap simply. And you, if you hold that trade all the way through, you can see how price comes down, gives us the TP, smacks it perfectly. Yes, we add here some drawdown. But that's the whole point of using a stop loss. Now, people may ask, well, this is a hefty stop loss. It's only 15 pips, honestly. All right, let's measure it. This is only 15 pips. Here to here. Oh, that's a little off. Unless I'm not measuring. Oh, I'm not measuring it right. Yeah, it is 15 pips. There you go. 15 pips. So that's my rule of thumb for a day trade, at least for the kill zone. I'm not looking to have a stop loss smaller than that. If I get stopped out, I get stopped out. I move on. Next trade. The whole point is leveraging proper, properly and not going beyond your means of your margin. You don't want a margin call. If you're getting a margin call holding a trade, you're risking way too much. You should not you should not be getting margin calls. So that's the London model. See, I was it was successful on a Monday. Interesting. So for those that trade Mondays, this could be an idea that you're looking for. It never gets back up to this buy side liquidity pool, though, here on the 15 minute. So let's take a look at what it looks like now. Look at the 15-minute chart. So, yes, yeah, so it looks like a losing trade based on this by the end of the kill zone. We can see it starts to turn back around. By 5 a.m., it starts to really pick up again. Going into that next dead zone and going into New York sessions. New York session continuation. And it sold off. And it sold off hefty, too. Look at that. So this is how I try to tell traders. I'm like, some trades will continue going on. This is another prime example. You're looking for a one-to-one -one scenario. This one-to-one -one turned into almost a three-to-one. And it's close enough. Right? Basically, a two-to-one right here. Two and change that you were looking at here. So this is 15 pips. Another 15 pips would be that two-to-one. And then we had a little more. But look at the whole idea and where we started from. Yes, it was not the best entry, right? People could be highly critical of themselves. And I don't blame you. Everybody's seeking perfection. Regardless or not, it was still a quality trade that we took. That's the whole premise of why I like to teach. I want you guys to improve in your entries. Get better entries. Keep improving on the entries. Be picky. Do not be random because you play random games, you're going to get random results. 
if you play objective and you play within a set of rules, you're going to get consistent results. You're going to see whether or not this model is actually feasible or it's not. Or you're going to start to see patterns inside that model. We've seen this model so many times. I don't have to show it millions of times. We know what it looks like. We know how to frame it. Now, that's based off of no bias, too. Did you hear me at any point say anything about daily bias? No, we did not. We said nothing about daily bias. We were just using confluence to tell us should we be a buyer or seller and what side of liquidity pool was ran before the open of the kill zone. Not sorry, before, during the kill zone and trying to go opposite to that. We did not mention daily bias, not one time, to find a setup like this. Now, you could be in tune with the daily bias. But more times than not, when you follow this sequence, the market puts you on the right side. I don't know how to explain it, but the market is doing exactly what it wants to do in a certain order. And I am following that order. I know we didn't get the best sell. We didn't get the top, the very top. No, we did not. We were not able to call that. But we were able to at least get 15 pips, right? I'm happy. Move on. And even though we got 15 pips, price continued to sell off. Notice here, you'll see a lot of the times, I don't know why. I don't know if it's just the way I'm sequencing it and the way I set out the parameter to draw. Every time price hits 15 pips, I am telling you, for some reason, it is so odd. The market, I mean, this is around 830. That's really strange, though. But I guess... Hey, things happen for a reason. After getting a TP, I normally see the market retrace. So I always try to tell people, pay yourself, pay yourself, pay yourself. Because let's say I didn't take the, the 15 pips. Or I didn't I didn't place a stop loss in. There's no stop loss order or stop order to knock me out my profit. And I kept holding. Imagine it turned back around. I would be upset. So understand, pay yourself, man. You woke up early or something. You sacrificed something to be here. You're sacrificing your time in general. So pay yourself, reward yourself in that time being. So that's the London model. Really nice model. Pay the trader. Shout out to the chat. Um, let's move on to the next day. Next day, what do we have? We have a London model. We have the Asian model. So let's play it all the way through. Let's check the chat while that's playing. You use this entry for any session. Any session. All right. We got a London model idea here coming up. This is not proper. There we go. Let's play that forward. Stop. See right here. So we got what we're looking at right here. It's the same premise. Don't change nothing. Don't change the steps. Changing up the rules too much. Keep it simple. I like simplicity. That's why I don't I don't like to do too much. I don't want to think too hard. Don't want to think too hard. We have any swing lows that are rated? No. So this is going to be the lowest low that we have. This is the lowest low we have of the session because we don't have any swing lows that's rated at this 2 a.m. candle that opens. So we're not taking any swing low. We're going to take the lowest low that finishes forming here on 2 a.m. on the 15-minute candle. That's the low. That's it. We mark that out. We have this swing high as well. Buy side of the liquidity pool. We're just framing the context now. Went from the 15 down to the one minute. I'm not going to frame on the 15-minute time frame and take the entry on the 15-minute time frame. No way. Like, I don't want to do that. I want to lower the risk in what I'm seeing. Right, the scope, the plain view that I'm seeing, I need to lower it to enter that market. Whatever the context is here, I want to see it on a lower time frame so I could get that detail, right? Very detail oriented. I want to get that one minute entry point every single time. Don't change it. We got the opening price. That's 2 a.m. Open. Once again, this is Sunday's opening price. SOP. Oopsie. SOP. Come on, trading view. And then where's midnight opening price? Here. 
very close to 2 a.m. So we go 12 a.m. I'll move this over so we can see it. See how it's stacked? Cool. Play it forward to see what happens. Price comes down. Look at that. Price comes down. At this point, now I'm engaging with you guys again. Can you show what you use to draw your lines? Can you show what you use to draw my lines? Like this? It's just a tool. I'm not sure exactly what line you're referring to. Like there's a vertical tool here. Like everything's here on the side. Play around. Play around with TradingView, fam. Play around. Look at look through the tools, man. They're there. They're there. Um, Sunday's opening price going down. Right? We're now below. What, what was I going to ask? I was going to ask you guys, are we in a premium or a discount in current price action? What we're observing here on the chart. What are we looking at? Anybody in the chat? Engage, engage, engage. Right? Focus. But discount. Good answer. Good answer. Shout out, chat. We're in a discount. Good job. We're, be we're below Sunday's opening price. We're below midnight opening price. Let me fix that. There we go. Midnight opening price. We're below the kills is opening price. So we have a triple confluence of being in a discount. We just rated our sell side liquidity pool that we framed. We talked about why we picked this low. We talked about it. One minute time frame here. We're going to look for a swing high to be broken with a fair value gap. And that fair value gap has to be inside that swing point too. Now, my old entry technique was this. This is the first up fair value gap or busy, right? Or fair value gap going to the upside, buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency. The first fair value gap going to the upside after taking out the sell side liquidity pool was my old entry technique. Yes. At many times, I would just sit here, wait for price to hit that level, and then go long 15 pips for 15 pips. Back then, I used to do 40 for 40, right? That was the recommended um, TP and stop loss ICT said in that 20 pip per video, right? This is where... I said I found the influence of figuring out this model and this pattern over and over again was that one video, ICT, 20 pips per day. And that's how I was able to formulate this kind of model for myself. This first fair value gap was where I would look to go long here and hold. But we're not looking at that entry idea right now. Not to say would it be feasible because it could be. But just keep that in mind. It's the first fair value gap that forms after this swing point is broken and it's in a discount for 2 a.m. Opening price. So you can see all those levels. We're below all those levels. Sunday, 2 a.m. Just make sure it's clean, right? Clean charts, guys. Clean up the chart. You want to see it. Make it a color that you can actually see and your eyes can see. 2 a.m. Opening. There we go. Now well, let's wait for look for the entry. Let's wait. Waiting. Waiting. Still nothing yet. But notice fair value gap here. Fair value gap here. Waiting, still waiting. Got to be patient. And there it is. Got to be patient. Now, many people will still ask and say, oh, why did you not take that fair value gap or this fair value You can. Who's to say you can't? I know everybody's pretty familiar with that ICT clip. Take any single, you know, beep fair value gap. Right? After rating one side. Just take every any single PD array, any fair value gap that's in the discount, any discount array, just use it as a long opportunity. That's what you could do here. But if I'm very specific in what I'm looking for, and I only want a certain way to enter the market, it has to be this sequence. Always, 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 always. There you go. Long here. Where am I going long? Discount. I'm not going long in a premium. That's the difference between the entry. I'm not buying higher than traders. Most traders, at least. I'm, buy I'm trying to buy low and cheap. I'm buying below Sunday's. The entry is forming below the kill zone's opening price. That's the first and foremost thing. But then when we add other context and other layers, like Sunday's opening price and midnight opening price and the 2 a.m. opening price, we, we almost get a home run at times. Play it forward. Price trades down into it. Right? We hold the longs. Like I said, we risk 1%. We risk 2%. Now, I'm not going to go into certain parameters because I know other people have different leverage and prop firms and different set of rules. But that's where we would look for our longs. And we would hold that. Understand, yes, we, we earned some we were in some deep drawdown. But if we play it through, comes back. 
Now, we could live with this. We understand that. We're giving the market cushion to pull down here. We can adhere this amount of pullback based on the equity and based on the risk that we're taking. I'm not using a buy order. I mean, I can. If price trades, like, it, it's, it's situational, right? You, you would have to use a market order if it's quick. If price returns back to it immediately, you got to use a market order or you're going to miss the entry. You understand? But let's say if price here, price comes here, creates the fair value up or creates the entry and it continues trading higher, then, then I have time to obviously place in a buy, a buy limit order. Price comes down, hits the limit on weakness, and it goes long. I have time to set it up. But if it trades right back down into it, I don't have time. We got to get in. Press buy. There's no, there's no thinking there. Or we're trying to find out what that high, the low point of that low is to place in that buy limit order. We don't have time for that. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, and yeah, price would go, go seeking for higher buy side liquidity or the internal liquidity that we have framed here during this session here. So I'm, when I say intern, I'm talking about inside this time period, the dead window here. That's still buy side here. Notice in the near future, going into the New York session, speed it up. It gets back to those buy side liquidity pools and it runs right through it. And that looks like news, if you ask me. Let's double check. I know this week was full of news. Yep, of course. Like, of course, that was there was news that pended and it shot PMI. There you go. PMI comes around and price runs up, pushing price in its direction that it wants it to go. And I think what Fed Chairman Powell's speech talking about the market, talk about America, inflation, interest rates, whatever, whatever. But once again, same thing stands for purge. Revert. Yes, we didn't get the revert immediately inside the kill zone. The revert came a little later. Hence, if we were to add more context, we could see, okay, there was news here. So maybe, you know, if somebody wanted to optimize the model, maybe they wait for the news instead. And then look to go long. Let's take a look at another day. So that's another London model. Oh, Asian model. Wow. First Asian model for AU on Forex Friday. So let's talk about this one. It is, let's keep playing it through. Going way too far here. I'm not sure if this is correct, but let's see. Let's double check something. Yeah, looks about right. You can see dead zone. Look at the dead zone too. Once again, dead zone. Those are all the dead zones. This is what it looks like when I put when I put this on my chart. This is what it looks like. It goes London. Look at that. Very specific window. Look at the other London session model that we were talking about. Very specific window. This is what it looks like. Everything on the chart. In New York and Asian. Every single kill zone. Except for London close. I don't trade London close. I do not trade London close. That's the only kill zone you don't hear me talk about. There we go. So this dead zone is a lot larger compared to the other dead zones for the London and New York model. For the Asian model, the dead zone is a lot larger, a lot larger. So that's sell side here. This is sell side here. And this is sell side here. Someone said in the chat, because Forex isn't moving like before. Interesting. I mean, I've only been trading for about six years now i can't truly say if the market has changed at least from my experience you know what i mean I've only been trading six years so it's not like i've been trading for 40 years and i'm like okay things are not as volatile but hey who knows maybe someone else does agree with you this is the new york lunch why would we call it the new york lunch we call it the new york lunch because it happens after the New York session right over here. Technically, it should be called the London closed lunch, but we already have a London lunch. And I don't want to get too fancy with the terminology, but I call it the New York lunch. And this is from 12 p.m. 
This is 12 p.m. So this is the afternoon now. It's not the morning anymore in New York. It's the afternoon at this point. And this is all the way to 8 p.m. Going into the afternoon and then going into the night. And then we got our Asian kill zone. I'm just call it Asian open or whatever. And then we got this going to midnight, New York Eastern time. We don't like to trade in the dead zones because more than likely you're going to face consolidation. Every time I show you guys these things, you see this all the time. Why trade here? Yes, there might be some small scalping opportunities, maybe like five pips or whatever, if it's really worth your while. But I don't think it should be. I think it, you're better off finding a scalp in one of the kill zones. Opening price. Do you always use 2 a.m. or 7 a.m. candles when we don't have... Y yes. Yes, every time. Every single time. Yes, sir. If you don't have a liquidity pool, you got to use that opening price at the 15-minute time frame for the start of that kill zone. We show it all the time. 100%. Hopefully, that answers your question, my G. And this is Asian Open. Premium discount. Same thing. Where are we relative to price? We're in a premium. Right? We're in a premium. We're above Sunday's opening price, so way above it. So keep that in mind. We're way above it going into the agent session. Way above it. Where are we in terms of midnight opening price? It's the same day, technically, kind of. It's not really the same day. Technically, there's the other opening price. But if we're using this for, sorry, Wednesday, right, true day open, pulling it all the way through, we're above 12 a.m.'s opening price, too. Technically, the Asian session, not to confuse anybody, the Asian session is already starting on a Thursday's candle because the new daily candle starts at, uh, what is it, 5 p.m. So around, what, here? The new daily candle already opened here, technically. So I'm not going to try and confuse you guys, but yeah. We're going to wait for what side of the market to be rated. We don't know. That's the whole point. We're not trying to be super speculatory. Like We're not trying to jump in and be like, yo, I bet it's going to go up. I bet it's going to go down. We could take those educated guesses, but we're not going to bank on them. It feels good to be right, of course, but we're not going to bank on it. We want to let the market breathe. Let it do what it has to do. What, let's see what happens. Runs up instead, right? It looked At one point, it looked like it was going to take out sell side when I was playing it forward, right? That's why we don't jump to price. Just because we see it going lower and lower and lower doesn't mean we just jump. Wait. Wait. As soon as we thought it was going to go lower, people would have been, oh, I'm going short, I'm going short, I'm going short. Foolish. Absolutely foolish. Wait. Raid. We're so close to this buy side liquidity pool. It's like, what else would it want to do? It's so close. Either or could have been a, a raid. It could have been this one first or this one first. But think about what it's doing. If it has a sequence and it's coded, if you truly believe the market is rigged, it's going to follow a certain sequence every single time especially when all conditions are met. It's going to put you on the side of the market that's correct. When you follow it from the way I'm trying to paint it to you. Buy side taken first. So the market's selling. It's kind of showing us its hand. Okay, are you trying to get traders in long to chase longs? Possibly. Retail traders break retests. That's what they're looking for. Break uh, something like that. Some nonsense, right? Sometimes they're right. And sometimes I'm wrong. I openly and always or truly admit when I get something wrong or I take a losing trade. I take losing trades. I don't want people to think, oh, Deontay never loses a trade. Bro, I lose trades, bro. I lose money too. Everybody, it's a part of the game. We all sign up for it. We're going to look for a entry technique of a fair value gap that breaks a swing low. That swing low has to be inside the fair value gap. Let's play it. Let's look very specific. See if we got one yet. No, we don't have any. This is not one. Look at it closely. It's not inside the fear value gap. That's not it. This looks close to it. Let me see. It's a low on this. Nope, it's a double bottom. Two lows equal fear value gap. But notice this is this is a fear value gap that's going to the downside. And we're really up in a premium at this point. We're high up into. 8 p.m.'s opening price. We're above it. Anything above the Asian open is overbrought. Premium. Play it forward. Just keep waiting. 
See what happens. Price trades all the way back up again. Finally gets back into those fair value gaps above price. Trades down fast. Still waiting. Still being patient. Patient. Still hasn't formed. There it is. Forms now. Forms right here. Forms at, what is this, 8.55 or 9.55? That's 9.55. 9.55 p.m. New York Eastern Standard Time. So we had to wait about two hours, essentially. Almost two hours. An hour and change to get the entry that we're looking for. It's called patience, right? Everything is not just going to give be given to you right away. You got to wait. You would look to go short here. 15 pips. 15 pips. I'm not really looking for much. It, this is still, this is classified as a scalp still. 15 pips is a scalp. You start pushing 20, 25, 30, 40 pips. Now you're looking for more of a intraday trade, right? This is more of a scalp idea. Could say I'm a scalper by definition. Wait for price to trade up into it. It trades up into it already. See it here on this candles here. Runs up into it here. See, this is why you got to be really, you got to be paying attention. Market order. Market order. Buy. I mean, sorry, sell. You can't wait to place a sell stop order, right, and type in that level. You want to just get in. Market is moving quick. This is the one minute time frame. You don't have time. Get in and hold. We purge buy side. What do we have below us? Sell side liquidity. So we draw back up into our entry idea too. We're going into Thursday now. You can see our price is still pulling up higher. Right, we're in drawdown. But are we worried about this drawdown? No, not really. But we're looking for price to what go short. Okay, that's the whole premise of the whole idea of why we took that short in the first place. And we can see. We're stopped out, so we don't get we don't get the winning trade here on this idea. Not all the time is it going to work. Right? I have to show you. I, it's not that I have to show you examples like it, but it's good to see that sometimes it doesn't work. It looks successful. It looks like it's going to go in the way you want it to, and then it doesn't. Do you have a name for your strategy? Not really. I don't know. I don't know, man. No name to it. I just call it the Asia model, London model, New York model. By Forensic Forex, Deontay. Yep, that's the Asia model there. So you can see it was one. It was once looking like a successful trade, and now it stopped us out. So be aware of that. Let's move on to this New York model, Thursday. Here. Now, this is our first New York model that we're talking about for the day. Same thing. We're taking 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. And then we got the end of the kill zone, which is 10 a.m. Let's move these up. So high to price. We're clearly still above. Sunday's opening price. Don't forget that. We're still above it. Once again, still above it. We're very over brought. We got the opening price of the kill zone. 7 a.m. Here. Buy side liquidity pools right here. Very close to where price is. Sell side. We got this one here. We don't have any swing lows. So we're taking the lowest low that we have in the session. There's no swing low here. It's just previous daily lows. Let's play it forward. 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 Runs up. See how I just said in that last example for the Asian session, it looked like it was going to go short. And then it took out buy side, and then we were looking for the short, but it failed. Same thing happened here. It looked like it was going to go short right here. So what does everybody look to do? They probably chase. And the only reason I'm saying they're chasing is because I'm talking about it from the lens of my model and the way I look at the market. People might be looking for short opportunities and taking profit and doing whatever they got to do here. But from my point of view, and when I tell the story like this, I see it as, oh, traders were probably chasing shorts. 
foolishly. And then price went back up. So then they jumped out of their shorts. They went long. Oh, now they got traders chasing longs now. They're looking for break retest higher. I want to go short. But the whole idea is I'm just waiting for one side to be broken. I only have two points. Yeah, exactly. Someone said in the chat, cash is king. Someone said it didn't sweep a swing low. Not at all. If anything, it created a swing low. Look at that. It engineered a swing low inside the kill zone. And to give you guys the time, right? London lunch. That's the dead zone. This is 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. It's London lunch. Then we got the New York. Kill zone. This is 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. There you go. We're not trading that 5 to 7. We're trading that 7 to 10. But we got to fr we're framing it from 5 to 7 to get a trade here. So that storyline. So now we're looking for shorts because we're above 7 a.m.'s opening price. We're above midnight opening price here too. Notice I'm not even talking about the London session here. The only reason I'm not talking about the London session is because there was no model for it. It didn't play out. So that's why I'm not talking about it here. And change this. This is 12 a.m. Premium, 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 and more premium. That's all it is. Every single time. One minute. Look at all that. Look at the data. Look at the data now. That's that same 50. Look at that. We went from the 50 minute time frame and all the way down to the one minute time frame. And the price goes up. We got a question in the chat. If the current price is higher than the Sunday's opening price, it indicates a premium. Facts. If the next day's opening price is below the Asian market opening price, does this mean the price started at the discount or for the specific day? Or does it still, I mean, it's overall in a premium for sure. Because if it's, a, just think about the rules, right? I'm not trying to break the rules. It's above Sunday's opening price. So it's, where is it at? Let's wait. Oh, wow. It's all the way down there. There it is. That's Sunday's opening price. There. It's in a premium. Right, we can't change that fact. It's in a premium. It's not in a discount. There's no argument there. Same thing here. Price is in a premium for the 7 a.m. kill zone at where it is right now, where I have it played out to. But before it was below 7 a.m. But same thing, Asian, the Asian kill zone. We're looking for the confluence, right? We're looking for them to stack. This was in a premium at said point. While this was in a premium and this was in a premium. For that Asian example. Are we counting every day, midnight opening price and Sunday's opening price? Yeah. You would want to consider that. Now, this is the broad sense. This, this, this is why I, I, I teach it in a very broad and simplistic term. That's why I don't want to do too much talking about specifics. I'm just trying to show you where the alignment of the market is giving its best set, sell setups and buy setups. When you go back to review the mark, market, right, to study what that weekly range did, you start to see natural occurrences. St exactly. Stack all the confluences that you have. Stack them. Stack them. Stack them. They're going to be a, a, they're your best friend every single time. You go back to any week. I don't care what week it is, bro. I don't care what week we're looking at. If you have a stack confluence and you follow the market order flow, you're going to see how easy – or how the accuracy of your trade starts to increase. You start going from, I literally, you start going from, I don't know what accuracy, depending on how you start. You know, let's say the poor performer, right? The trader performs very poorly, right? Their, their win rate is like 10%. But I mean, you start to add these confluence, their, their win percentage, right? Their win rate starts to increase slowly and slowly and slowly. And sure, surely they're not, you're going to start getting to 50-50. Now, 50-50 is a good means, right? If you can, If you have a win rate of 50%, Man, you, you can still have a success. Yeah, people don't understand. You can still have a successful career with a 50-50 win rate. But I'm not going to get into that right now. I want to continue in flow. 7 a.m. is opening price. We're still looking for a shorting opportunity that forms above 7 a.m. Do we have anything like that? No, not yet. Let's keep playing. Price comes back up again. Look at that little blip in time. Look at this little blip right here. What is that? You know what I mean? 
when you look at the chart, what? It looked like it was just about to sell. But then all of a sudden, it drops below 7 a.m. real quick, and it runs right back up. Interesting. Market is rigged. Market is rigged. Why this specific zone below 7 a.m.? Right? I can't be talking nonsense because I'm talking facts. I'm coming very objective. We, we show this day in, day out. It's, un, not, it's undeniable information. Undeniable information. Still waiting, still waiting. I think we got one. Yep, we got one. Double check. Did we get one? Hmm. Still don't see any yet. Nope, no swing low, no swing low rated. Just keep playing. Still nothing. Ooh, don't tell me it happened exactly at the end of the session. Yeah, it did. So right here. Oh, we're gonna get to that. We're gonna, bro. You're gonna see it's uh, not just AU. I mean, sorry, not just EU. That EU buy that you saw on Sunday's opening price, that's rigged. Of course, it's rigged, bro. What about 9 a.m. swing low that was rated? The 9 a.m. swing low that was rated on the 15 minute time frame for what? For AU? 9 a.m. The 9 a.m. swing low. This is 9 a.m. This is not a swing low, bro. At least on this chart. And I'm not saying you're wrong. Um, but this is not a swing low. That's triple bottom. Look at that. That's a triple bottom, fam. Gotta open your eyes. All right. One, two, three. Look, one, two, three. It's a triple bottom. One, two, three. Good one. I'm glad that you asked that question. Someone's actually questioning, you know? Don't just take what I say by face value. Be like, yo, Deontay, show me that. I don't want you, 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 you could be showing us nonsense. I would never come up here and show you guys nonsense. That's a triple bottom. One, two, three. All those lows are all the same. Literally the same. One, two, three. So, yeah. Fair value gap here. Looking for what? Short. Here. We're waiting to get that short right there. And this, was ha this one happened at the end of the session. Annoying, of course. Very annoying because you had to been attentive. This is where your focus and concentration comes into play. This is who you are as a man, who you are as a person, as an individual, right? As a human. How disciplined and focused are you? Can you sit here from 7 a.m. all day to 10 a.m. for those hours? Not a, lot of, not, a, not a lot of people can do that. They can't sit down, can't sit still. They want the reward to come immediately. Impatient. You would have to be very patient for this entry. Price trades up into it right there at 9.57. Literally three minutes before the end of the New York kill zone. There goes the, there goes the entry. You're in short. You're in short literally at the end. Yep, 9.57. And now we hold. Draw down. That's why we use a stop loss. Many people, but what about the drawdown? You don't expect price to go against you. Well, you expect every trade that you take is never going to have drawdown, right? Your track record, you never, you've never taken a trade where you've seen the market go into drawdown? 100% TP hit. Fire. Fire trade. What is that sell side still? And look, it engineered what? These lows. It in, Bro, it engineered the lows here on purpose. It said, ah. Uh, Let's build these lows because I know in the near future, the higher time frame, at whatever pathway the market is going, I don't know the path that it's trying to, the, the, the configuration of how it's trying to go about its price action. But I know for sure when we look back at it and we try to read the story, it's telling us that it engineered these lows to come back here in the near future to run it. Come on. Yeah, patience is key, right? This one was definitely valid. This is a valid sell. Play it all the way through. Hits that level. I'm objective. I'm so objective. Yes, we could have taken this level too, but I'm framing it here. That's why I'm getting these consistent results. I'm not getting random results, guys. 
I could start tracking this. It's a model. It's a framework. I didn't mention anything about daily bias either. Don't get it twisted. We could add that to this too. But I'm bringing it to the context to the trader that doesn't want to overthink the market or doesn't have as much time to sit here and try to break down daily trend, you know, or bullish momentum or bearish momentum. If you don't got time like this, this is the cookie cutter approach. And I'm trying to show you how to get right into the bulk of it, right? Don't, we're not going to waste any time. Where are the best setups going to happen? Here, here, and here. And it has to happen like this. We don't waste time. I'm showing you where the quality setups are every single week. Just start studying it. If you're not studying the market this way, you ain't going to see it this way. You got to study it this way. And yeah, that's Thursday. Now let's get into NFP. So there's a London model and a New York model. I'm going to start off with the NFP stuff, stuff first, and then we'll talk about the other London model second. Because there's a London model that is profitable, but it would look funny to watch watch it going into the New York uh, model. So let's talk about the New York model first, and then we're going to rewind and talk about the London session here. You could already see it was a sell setup. Where's price at for NFP? It's a, it's above Sunday's opening price, guys. Come on. Where else would NFP would have pushed price for the best sell? Down. It would have to be down, especially with all the correlation that you got going on and what happened in the market too, right? We had a fair value gap, most likely. All right now I'm going to bring in a little, let me see. I'm going to bring in a little higher time frame context. We had a fair value gap. Look at that. Friday, pull back into it. Whoa, right? Now we're adding another layer to it. But I don't want to take it there because then things start things start to get a little confusing for some people. And I, I just want to make it simple for everybody. I just want you to understand it could be a lot more simpler than the way you're thinking. Stop overthinking, guys. What about this? What about this, bro? Learn one thing at a time, man. <sighs> man. And you gotta tell grown men this stuff too, bro. Like I'm 20, I'm only 25, 20, 26, but you gotta tell some grown men some of these things. You got to be patient. Lock in. It's 10. Same thing. We're going to go through this a little quick, but I want you to see. And I want to say, I'm going to emphasize on this, right? Because this is one thing I want to get a point, get, get across. This model, right? My model, Forensic Forex by Deontay, right? Deontay's model. And the way I like to trade, the kill zones, especially for the New York. You can use it to trade NFP. Here is another NFP example. Another month that we're showing NFP, right? We want to get one, F one NFP every single month. This is another Forex, Fr Forex Fridays NFP week review where we're showing that the same idea that we're talking about can still be utilized to capture NFP. And watch the sequence. I'm not even going to say anything. Just watch. Think about this to yourself. I'm going to mute myself.
I muted myself. You guys don't listen. I can tell you guys don't pay attention. I purposely said I was going to mute myself. <laughs> yo, you guys kill me, yo. You guys kill me. You guys kill me. Oi, 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 oi. Um, we're looking for a swing high. All right, we got the swing highs broken. Buy side liquidity raid. I was just telling you guys, watch it in silence. People can't watch it in silence. And there we go. Look how quick that happens. Look at that. Look at the framework. Right? Look at the entry. The entry The entry technique is right there in front of your face. People are like, oh, I don't see the entry. Right here. Look at that. What's that? Swing low. Oh my gosh, Deontay. I can't believe it. You know how to trade NFP? Of course I do. Right there, bro. You crazy? Choose not to choose NFP. I'd be sleeping. But imagine. Imagine. Imagine, imagine, imagine. Hits it, gone. Hits it, and it's gone. It is gone. Once again. Right, I'm trying to emphasize on this. Bro, you guys can trade NFP. Who I don't see nobody else talking about this stuff, bro. Nobody. And I say that confidently. I don't see nobody talking about this stuff, bro. Wait till they get banned. Wait, wait till this becomes a problem, bro. If it ever becomes something like that. I don't want it to, of course. But imagine if we have millions of people understanding what this is. Imagine. Imagine we had whole countries of people, of young generations, of young folks knowing what this is, what I'm teaching. Imagine. Think about that. Don't let that go over yet. Imagine we had nations, millions of souls, many traders, many youthful traders, a lot of young men, a lot of men, right? Women too. Not saying there's not a lot of women traders, but demographically speaking, there's more males in the industry. Imagine if many young men knew how to use this model. Imagine. Let that sink in for a second, bro. Imagine we just came to NFP every freaking first Friday of the month, bro. Every first Friday of the month we came in, we look for this setup every single time. But nobody's nobody's talking about this, bro. Nobody, bro. I'm not saying it. To, oh, I'm the first and this and third. Bro, I don't understand why there's nobody talking about this. That's what's getting me upset, bro. Why is nobody else in the trading community talking about stuff like this, bro? Before we digress, right? Because we'll get into that later. But simple. Buy side raid, buy side raid, sell side. Look at what it looks like on the 15-minute time frame the same thing purge revert guys i prepped you to learn this i prepped you to trade nfp over and over again trade any day you want here but the conditions line up we're above 7 a.m let's look at it from the lower time frame we're above 7 a.m we're above midnight opening price where's midnight all the way over here somewhere here that's midnight here that black line here is midnight MOP. Come on, bro. <laughs> this thing is rigged, bro. This market's going to, bro. This market is not. Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch my language because I know this is going on YouTube. So, this market, bro. I'm telling you, it ain't right. Watch when a lot of people start figuring this stuff out. It ain't right, bro. It ain't right. But you'll still have other people telling you support resistance, support resistance, support. Re Stop. Nonsense. Don't want to hear that. Now, London model. Right. We're going to look at the London model. The London model held through. It was in drawdown. It was in drawdown. But on a day like this, I wouldn't even tell you to trade London. If you had to trade NFP, don't trade London NFP, bro. Do not trade London NFP day. Just trade the NFP event. Just trade the event itself. Don't trade anything a couple hours before the event. Trade the event and frame it the way I'm framing it. But if you were just curious and you wanted to see how this played out, the London model for that day, it was still successful. It's crazy. We'll do it real quick here. That's sell side. Follow me here. Pay attention. Right? 
I need you guys to pay attention. I'm not changing color. So that's buy side, that's sell side. Let's play it forward. What happens here? Buy side is taken. Buy side is taken. Where are we? We're in a premium. We are above 2 a.m.'s opening price at said point. We're above the weekly opening price, and we're above, when that happens, we're above midnight opening price. Where Sunday's opening price? It's all the way down here, guys. It's all the way down here compared to that. It's all the way down there. So we're not confused. I notice people jumping in and out of the Zoom. I, like, glance over. I see people leaving and joining and stuff. So that's where we are. Check the one minute. Let's see what happens on the one minute. On the one minute, do we have any opportunity to go short here? Let's see. No, we did not. We had none. Based on the entry that I'm talking about, it goes back up again. It's above 2 a.m.'s opening price here. That's 2 a.m.'s opening price here. 2 a.m. Play it forward. There goes the entry technique right here. Bro, when people find this, bro, when people find this out and actually put their money where their mouth is, bro, I'm trying to tell y'all, bro, you can make a little income. You're going to be taxed, though. Like, I live in America, bro. People don't understand. Capital gains tax is ridiculous, bro. Like, care what loopholes you talk about, bro. They're going to come tax you, bro. Um, yeah, that's where your short would be. Right there. You're short here. 15, 15. And then if you play it all the way through to NFP, you'll see how that's set up. Ah, it was just stopped out, actually. Ooh. Was it? Double check, double check, double check. Yeah, it was just stopped out. So that see that London setup? It was stopped for sure. So didn't pan out. Like other weeks that we had where the London still held true and gave a successful setup with the NFP run. But look how London just runs up. The Asian session. The Asian session from on was that Thursday technically or well, technically it's Friday, but Thursday. Look at the lows it created here for NFP to run back down to those lows. Come on. You gotta start paying attention. Be more objective in your way in the way you trade. Now NJ is the last one. Check the chat. Write this down, bro. Pen and pad, bro. Like, write this down. I mean, it's going to be on YouTube, bro. Don't even trust. You're going to be able to watch, play this stuff over and over. Unless they delete it off of YouTube. You know, that's another that's another thing. But, hey, you, you'll be able to watch it over. So, hourly, right? Let's focus up. Let's focus up again. All right? Premium discount. Premium discount. All right, hey, that's on you. That's on you. Premium discount, right? Prices in a premium or prices in a discount. So when prices below in the discount, we're looking for ideal buy scenarios. Just looking at the overall view of the market, we can see it's cheap. It's cheap, it's cheap, it's cheap. The low of the week happened to form on Monday. Monday, 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 in a dead zone, too. So that might have been a macro idea. Some of those macro guys that like to trade here, macro kill zone, they try probably try to find a long here. I wouldn't have. You know, that's a dead zone, so I wouldn't trade there. But low happens to form on Monday, and high forms on Thursday again. And this is NJ, too. So, like I said, we're not trying to be biased to just one thing or just the majors or just the yens. We like to switch it up. Right, we don't discriminate against pairs here. Not at all. We we use it all. The price comes down and takes out what? Previous daily low. Right? Friday's low, Thursday's low. It's taking out some type of liquidity on the higher time frame and then changing trend. We can see it takes out the 28th low here. Thursday the 28th, March. Friday the 29th, March. Takes out those previous daily lows and then it runs back up. It just swept. Sell side, buying on weakness. When the market's going down, that's where they're more likely to buy. When the market is going down, that's why ICT has said it feels scary. It feels literally sca scary. And also previous, yeah, previous weekly low taken as well, right? Major structure broken and liquidated. It feels scary to buy when the market's going down. 
but that's how it's designed. Your best buying conditions is when the market goes down and your best co selling conditions is when the market goes up. You always find better quality trades in that way, in that fashion. You don't really find good buys when the market's already going up. Not really. So let's get into this London model here. 15 minute. It's NJ. Nothing changes. Same thing. Same objective measures, man. We go 2 a.m. Where are you at? Here. Thought I had it right the first time. I didn't. This is Sunday's opening price. SOP. Right. I'm not really concerned about news. Hardly concerned about news. You don't really hear me talk about news very often. My simple way of thinking about it, right? I try to take it from a simplistic approach. News is the excuse to move price action faster. That's it. I don't look at the the, the quote unquote fundamentals, right? Or the analytics or the data. I'm not looking at the numbers. Oh, what's the job numbers? Oh, what's this? Oh, what's that? You guys do know the only news event that I really like to talk about is the interest rates. That's it. Are they cutting it, raising it, or keeping it the same? That's all I really care about. Everything else in my belief system, irrelevant to me. Just taking up space in my brain. Why am I even thinking about it? Waste of time. Let's be efficient here. This is the opening price. That's 2 a.m.'s opening price here. 2 a.m. Pay attention. Let's play it forward. See what happens. Sell side raid. There we go. Sell side raid. It went below 2 a.m. And it's below Sunday's opening price. And it's below midnight opening price. Right? Triple confluence on a Monday. Wow. It's impressive. That is impressive. Nice. Which is something that probably does happen often. Right? If you actually study this idea, this probably happens often. And we just don't see it. 15 minute swing low rated. Swing low one, two, three. We stalk it on the one minute. Now we're stalking the entry. See if the entry formed. It did right there. Look at it, it formed right there. It was immediately where my eye goes. Right there. Here. Yes, we have other fair value gaps that could might be used as a feasible idea. We had one here. The first one that forms, I'm not sure if it trades back down into it or not. But we'll see. It would be long. Here, 15 pips, 15 pips. And our projections reach into some type of buy side liquidity pool. So it makes me feel a lot more comfortable too. So that fear of losing and the fear of it, you know, going wrong, it slowly diminishes, right? Kind of eases me that my projections of 15 pips gets me back up to midnight opening price. Gets me way back, gets me definitely above 2 a.m.'s opening price and the weekly opening price, but it gets to all levels of projections here. So if this plays out, solid. Play it forward. Profitable, right? Could scale out 10 pips. Hold it into basically New York. That's that dead zone. Look at that dead zone retracement. Heavy retracement. I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like the trade here. If you can yeah, take the part take the partials or you hold. NJ pulls all the way down. Speed it up for the video's sake. And it stops us out there. As you can see. So you go back to the one minute. Just to view it. Nine point nine. Right. Hey. What are you gonna do? Well, we could see time and time again for some reason when we look at the market from this way, it gives us a sequence that allows us to follow the exact steps of the market makers are walking. It's like they're walking on the beach, right? Mm -hmm. And we're trying to fill their footprints in. We're just stalking them. We're on their trail. Every time I follow it this way, more than likely I'm on their trail. 
and eventually things get, you know, things change. I can't control the nature of the market. Things change. It's not always going to keep trending in one direction. Mm. And that's something a lot of people got to learn. So that is that London model idea. And we're going to talk about Friday NFP. So we're going to skip right to the end. Once again, we're going to look at an NFP example. And we're going to look at a gold NFP. That's going to be also a cool one to see. Gold NFP. All right? Want to make money? Let's see. Let's see if you can put your money where your mouth is. So... Right before 7 a.m. We're looking at 5 to 7. This is all we really need for NFP day. We're not really focused on too much. This is all we need. Because this liquidity pool right before this major event is going to tell its... It's going to show its hand by telling us which side it purges and where it is amongst the weekly opening price, the kills on opening price, and the daily opening price. It's always going to show its hand. Always. Because the market is sped up to move faster and accelerate. If it wasn't NFP, it would just be another ordinary day, and it would still do the same formation. And this is NJ. What happened on Monday? Is your monthly bullish cash fixed price moving below the monthly opening price? NJ? Uh, I'm not quite sure what you're asking. If you could rephrase that for me, fam. But yeah, bullish though. I, I showed a long opportunity. I'm I'm long on all the yen crosses. Doesn't matter if it's NJ, CAD J, Swiss J. Just higher time frame. You see, all those markets are like pushing higher, and the Japanese yen is still going lower. Conversation for another time, but yeah, 7 a.m. Swing low here. Swing high here. Buy side, sell side. We're framed. We're good. Play it forward. Play it forward. And I know the event's coming now. Boom. Price comes down, takes out what? Sell side liquidity pool. Price comes all the way down, takes out the sell side. It's going to one minute time frame. So you can see just prior, right? We don't get that run of the 15 minute time frame. You know, it's really close. But just prior to that market taking off, look at the same pattern showing itself again. It's just missing one step. Right? The market just, for some reason, it didn't want to run this high. Right? The orders are already booked for said point or said reason. It ran some type of buy side already, and it was fine with that one. It didn't get to our framed 15-minute swing high. But I just want you to see, look what happens just before NFP. See that sequence again? You telling me I'm 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 crazy for this? I, yeah, I, it didn't sweep. That's exactly what I said. It's so funny, you guys. I yeah, it didn't sweep. But I'm showing the example. It did sweep some swing high though. So, not trying to cherry pick, of course, right? Let's go to five minute. It did. Am I seeing things or I'm incorrect? It did. Yes, it did. Ah, I knew it. That's why. Thank you. Thank you, chat. It for surely did run a swing high. 100%. Look, your concentration is way better than mine. See, I would have missed that. But I, I know I didn't label this for no reason this day. There we go. So, yes, we had a swing high broken. There it is. Shout out to the chat coming through for that one. So, swing high here. One, two, three. This is still a swing high formation here. One, two, three. Three, one, two, three. It forms inside the lunch kill zone still, right there. So we're still going to take it. You play it forward. Appreciate it, fam. Man's is locked in. And it ran a swing high, so it definitely did run a swing high. You go back to a one minute time frame. Notice, yeah, that's a, that's it right there. We don't have any fair value gap. That's ran with a fair value gap at all. So we keep playing it forward, play, 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 and man, a couple minutes right before. Yes, it's valid, bro. People ask the same question over and over again. I don't want to hear that in, that question again, bro. It's valid. 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 Swing here. 
There it is. There goes the entry. It goes short. Definitely no drawdown, too, on this one. Oh, my gosh. This was a beautiful example. Brokers would be mad at you, right? If I went around and showing, like, brokers would be honestly mad because it's like taking candy from a baby. You're a professional at this point. You're a professional, bro. You're a professional trader at this point because there's no way that you should have been able to predict which way NFP would have went. Think about that, bro. I'm trying to tell you, this is crazy. There's no way traders should be able to pinpoint exactly where and how NFP should be going. Bananas, fam. Facts. Facts, facts, facts. Chat, this is crazy. But that's NJ. So like I said, we're not saying it only happens on EU. Gee, people ask me this all the time. Is it just UCAD? Is it just... Bro, it's every single Forex period that you can think of. Maybe not some of the crazier exotics, of course. But any of the majors, it's solid. Trade it. Trade it. Trade EU. Trade AU. Trade GU. Trade UCAD. Hell, trade you Swissy if you really wanted to, right? Trade NU. And if you want to dabble in the yen crosses, dabble in the yen cross. If you want to dabble in some exotics, dabble in some of the exotics. Now, I'm a Forex guy. I'm not a futures guy. I'm not a commodities guy. I'm not a crypto guy. So my main specialty is Forex. Now, if push comes to shove and we can't trade Forex anymore, what am I going to have to do? I'm going to have to go trade futures. That would be my next bet. I'm going to go trade futures. But yeah, that's our weekly range review. Hopefully you learned something tonight. Please, if you did not understand anything that I said for this weekly range review from the DXY, from what is it, AU, and then NJ, especially the NFP moment here. Like I, I just hope the light bulb is just turning. I hope the gears are turning, right? Hope the gears are turning and that brain is working. I want you to see that it is more simpler than you think. Everybody's going to tell you it's you need 50 PD arrays. No, you do not, bro. You need one PD array, bro, every time. And the only reason I think a lot of people don't want to admit it is because they want to get the best entry. They're not they they're never what's the word? The word I'm looking for is they're never satisfied. There we go. They're never satisfied with the result. Why couldn't I have gotten a better sell? Why couldn't I have gotten a better buy? You got to be able to understand you're not going to get the high of the high sell. You're not going to get the low of the low sell every single time. But if you do it enough times and you start throwing darts, you're eventually going to hit right in the middle every time, right? You start playing archery over and over. You keep shooting the arrow. Eventually, you're going to hit a perfect score right bullseye right in the middle and that's what i'm showing here this is a bullseye bro this is a cannon on nfp new york model by deontay you're witnessing it firsthand here again apply it apply it apply it apply it apply it apply it let's move on to the next topic so our next topic is going to be what is our next topic actually high probability scalping okay cool this is, a, this is a very fun one, too, for those that don't have time to trade, right? For those that can't watch these setups like this, can't watch intraday setups, can't be there for the kill zone. You got kids, right? You're a father of two. You're a father of three. Whatever it is. You got a wife. You got you got other duties. You got a girlfriend. Whatever it is, right? You, something in life is keeping you back. Okay, you can't day trade. Fine. And you're like, Deontay, I got to trade. I got to trade. I still got to find a way to make more money, you know? I got to find a way to pay bills. Cool. We can still make this work. We can start looking at the daily chart and we can look for swinging opportunities and looking for high probability scalps on the daily time frame. Now, for this trader, you got to understand you're taking on a different approach. You're not an intraday trader. You're a swing trader at this point or a position trader. Your stop loss and your TP is not going to look like your average TP and stop loss for intraday trader. Like you see here, 15 pips for 15 pips. You're not looking at that anymore. We're looking at almost 100 plus pips for a stop loss, maybe 150, maybe 200, etc. So you got to risk properly and you got to be using micro lots, okay? You can't be going out here trying to use standards unless you have the equity, of course, and your account size allows it. 
but generally speaking, people don't may not have the funds, right, to trade with higher stop losses or lots on a higher time frame because they have smaller accounts, and that's okay. Compounding is going to be your best friend. So let's go on the daily chart. We're gonna take a look. Oh, dang! I do. Do I want to go back? No, I don't want to go. I'm, I'm gonna show it at the end. I'm gonna show that gold NFP example too. Just so that light bulb stays on, that you're still sharp. You know. Let's take a look at. Hmm. Let's take a look at GU. Right. Let's just go GU. Good question. Someone said before I go on. Are you looking? Are you trading just your personal account, or do you have a prop allowed USA? Use the DAX. Um, no, DAX, DX trade or whatever. Um, I'm not using that prop firm. I'm using top tier trader. So we're using Trade Locker. So that's what we're using. It's powered by TradingView. I love the platform. Really good. The only thing that the only drawback that I don't like about the prop firm that I'm with right now, top tier trader, is that the payout is through uh, another application. So it's through Wise. And I was I was previously with FTMO. It was a direct deposit trade into my account, right? Right into my checkings or savings. Now with this, now I know other platforms are different. They either have a third party app that the money is sent to, and then you can withdraw out of that, which is like a cash app kind of thing or a Zelle or a Venmo kind of thing. I don't really like that because it's more people cutting into my profits. You guys already take what, 10% off top. And then now I got to get the money sent to a third party app. And then when I have to withdraw from the app, there's going to be fees, of course. You know, everyone's got to make their little money. I hate the, I hate this world, bro. But um, yeah, that's that's what. I've, and then the funded account is just your your typical swing account, trade news, uh, key use EAs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And but I don't I don't use bots. Everything is manual. I'm not a bot guy. I've never delved into a uh using bots. I should, but I haven't really automated it that, that way. I like coming here manually and taking the trades. And in the live account, I've been feeding the beast for the last couple of years when I was funded with FTMO. Live account was with Olanda, and the leverage is 1 to 50. Not huge leverage, of course. Not a prop firm. You know, the leverage is, is a lot lower. Um, I'm not sure what their max leverage is on it, um, but I, right now I have a current 1 to 50, and I had it raised up. So it was, one, it was 1 to – before it was 1 to 20, and then I got it raised up to 1 to 50. So it ain't going to be your fastest route of making a lot of money, of course, but it's going to be your safest bet. Any live broker is going to have your best interest at hand. You know, they're going to limit you with margin. They're going to limit you with leverage. Prop firms are going to give you unlimited amounts of leverage. It's a money thing. You know what I mean? They, they got to get people to come in, blow these accounts and keep buying the challenges. That's how the entire business model even flows. We know that. And that's what we all sign up for. That's the reality of prop firms. And if you're comfortable with that, you're comfortable with that. But don't spend your time buying multiple challenges. You know, take a break. If you failed or you blew an account, take your time, pause, and go back and refine what your models are. So hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, you, I would. Mo your best, your most trusted USA broker is going to be Orlando. Just any Google search, you'll see. But I know there's some people that don't live in the United States, and they may live in another country and they can't have access to that broker and they have to use some other broker, look into your, your, your best quality broker in your region, in your trading zone, in your country, you know, and sign up with them, sign up with them, put a deposit in whatever the minimum payment is, make that and, and slowly start building that trading account. It's going to take a while, but it's, it's better than someone cutting into your profits. You know, when it's, when it comes to taking out and withdrawing, Hey, I withdraw anytime I want. I don't have to wait. You know what I mean? With the prop firms withdrawal, you have to wait either a week or two weeks. And I know there's some props that might have instant withdrawals or whatever, but you got to pay more for that. Pay to play. With the brokers, it's not that way at all. Right? They're holding your money. that Because you're you're the one putting the money into it. The prop firms are not holding our money. We don't own that equity. We're using the equity to get profit and, and split it with somebody else. So remember, live account is always going to be your best friend at the end. End game, live account. End game every time live account. If you're just starting off, you're someone that doesn't have a lot of cash, and you're a young dude, you're in your 20s, you're 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 in high school, you're in your teens still, you know, you're a young trader, you're ambitious. Hey, start building a live account. But if you want to take that route of being getting trying trying your hand at a prop firm, and you've studied 
and you've demo trade and you find a realistic model that you can use and execute, apply it and see if you pass phase one, see if you pass phase two, and see if you can get a couple payouts with the account. Even though people get funded, doesn't mean they're going to be funded permanently. People lose funded accounts. People people are not going to sit here and be funded for 12 years out of the, 12 years, you know, back to back. People lose their funded account, then they get it back, and then they lose it, and they get it. So it's a cycle. It's a never-ending cycle because the process of being a trader is never endless as well. It's just how it goes. But the more you get more methodical and objective, you'll start to see how going in with a model and a framework is better. You need a model, bro. Like, you can't trade without a model. You, like I said, you want to play random games, you're going to get random results. So higher probability scalping on the daily time frame. It all starts with swing highs and swing lows. I want you to notice that. It starts with swing highs and it starts with swing lows. Once the market starts trending, you have a, you know, what's the term? You have a plain view of long opportunities in the near future. And a lot of them are going to be very obvious, and some are going to be like, ah, dang, it just keeps trending higher. I wonder why. I should get into this trend. But you never get into the trend. You keep fighting the trend. Don't fight the trend. You're waiting for just a swing high to break a swing low. Sorry, you're waiting for a swing high to be broken and then a higher swing low forming. That's your bullish scenario. Or you're waiting for a swing low to be broken and then a lower swing high. Once you get that second part of the formula, of the bullish trend formula. Now you're now you're a hunter now, right? Now you now you're looking to go after the kill now. Because you have confirmation that it's over here at this location, at this coordinates, we're ready to fire, right? We're ready to attack. So let's just take a look at an example here. So better yet, there is an example from last year that I want to look at. I think it was like March. Yes. Yes, this is perfect. Since you guys know that I'm not dragging you around, I'm going to show you a clip of last year. Go to playlist. Give me one second. I'm going to share my screen with you guys. It is the 2023 daily tracking. Share this tab instead. Yep, full playlist. We did gold. Like, all this is gems, bro. Like, you go back, the track record is there. We know how to read price. We know how to find the trend. Look at this is GU. And I want to show you the beginning of this month. Millions of retirement accounts could be heading. Oh, damn it, D. Okay, cool. So this is, it doesn't matter if it's the first or the second. I got my little intro, you know, for Friday. Um, come on, come on, load. I'm not sure why I don't have it labeled the opening price of March. It's, it's there on the chart, but just look at it. Full screen this. You can see we got some algorithmic levels. We got sell side. We got buy side liquidity pools. I believe I had IPTA on the chart. I'm not sure when I put it on the chart, but it was on the chart at said point. I know it's there, but the market looks to be trending lower. Right, I was I was just watching it. It was trading lower. Now this is the beginning of the month. The beginning. Take a look at what it looks like at the end of the month. Now we went day by day. By the end of the month, this video is literally less than a minute. Look at that. Look at where we are by the end of the month. So I knew I had I had put the the levels on it. It purges sell side and it runs back to buy side. So it looked like it was going bearish, but something changes after that first week of the month. Something changes. This is March 2023. Something changes here. We can see clearly it rates sell side and it breaks well, a swing high. If it breaks a swing low, it should create a lower swing high, but it doesn't. It, go, it goes against its natural flow. It breaks a swing low and then some, and then it breaks a swing high. So there is possibly bullish momentum coming into the market. So what I'm showing you is bullish momentum. And that bullish momentum starts here. 
that was where price was running those sell, that sell side liquidity, and this is where it runs back up. That bullish momentum started right here on this candle, right there on that day. So if I was, you know, noting off something in a book or something, right, or a trading book, and I was writing down like annotations of what the market did, I would write down in my book, okay, it is now March 10th, Friday, 2023, and price broke a swing high that formed on March 7th, Tuesday, 2023. This is an indication of bullish momentum. Note it down. Cool. Put it away. And we think about what does that mean to us in price? It means to us that the market could potentially start trending in one direction. What would we need to form next? A higher swing low. So swing high is broken. A higher swing low is going to form. And text my little brother. All right, he's good. Swing high broken. Waiting for a higher swing low. Wait, there we go. Look at that. So large move to the downside. And then all of a sudden, you would more than likely expect, okay, price is going to pull back and start stalling again. Get traders short. Get them back short. But we had the premise and idea that this was the start of the indication that price is going to change. Now, this order block theory that happens here, like I said, go back and watch the daily updates. You can see there's PD arrays on my chart. There's fair value gaps, et cetera, et cetera. We talk, we talk about that the entire month. So not that I want to go back and like answer every single question because I can't. I wish I could, but higher swing low here. Now that we got this higher swing low, we are more confident that the market is going to continue trading higher. This third candle here, now this is where – it gets into the high probability scalping model. This third candle here is the most important candle. It is another indication for us to proceed in the steps for this model or the framework of this model. The third candle, one, two, three. I know it's not a confirmed higher swing low for those that know what that means. Higher swing low means that the high point is confirmed, meaning the next candle or the following candles get back to the high point of that swing point it's not confirmed yet but by definition it's a higher swing low because there's a higher low on the right and a higher low on the left and it's higher than this one where does this higher swing low form to oddly enough inside some type of pd array see this all the time in the daily chart those swing points are forming inside of some type of inefficiency we want to see this third candle broken I want to see that candle here broken. Let's see what happens. It breaks. Fantastic. That is great. I'm happy that it broke. Why? Because this gives me confirmation that price probably wants to continue going higher. I also have the context of what? We had down candles. Price looks to be wanting to trade away from down candles. Right? Order block theory. Engulf the down candles, trade back into the down candles, and trade away. So I like these odds that are playing out. The fact that this candle breaks this candle's high, I am looking for the high probability scalp to occur on this candle's high. So it has to just occur on the candle that breaks the third candle's high. That's it. I just want to see that candle's high rated. Now, if the next daily candle, I know this is a question that I get often, very often, and I can see why. If the next daily candle opens and it doesn't take out the high, but the next candle after this one opens and takes out the high, then this candle becomes the high probability scalp high that we're looking to buy into and price to target. We really truly don't want the low of that third candle's low being rated. We don't want to see that. We prefer the high. So if we get an inside bar, great, because it's still intact. The previous daily high and previous daily low is still intact. We're trading inside its range. But if the next candle opens and takes out the high, Cool, we can move on to the next step. But if the next candle opens and takes out the low, then it resets everything again. We have to wait. So this is a very patient idea. There is a cookie cutter cut. There is a cookie cutter approach to it, but we'll talk about that after. Here, so we're looking to go long here. So the next trading day, it's a Monday. It would be better if this was actually forming on like a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. But going forward, we could probably say, okay, maybe we're going to go long. And this bullish momentum is going to carry on for three days. 
this bullish momentum is going to carry on for six days, maybe. And let's play it forward, see what happens. Next candle, it runs up. So we got our high probability draw on that high. Runs right through it. So there was a long opportunity here. Now, I'm not sure if TradingView is going to allow us to see the data there, but I could only imagine that during one of the kill zones, price was trading up and through that idea. So we can see we do run it before any of the kill zones that we would trade. So it runs into it on Sunday. So by Sunday, that high is already ran. But we would look for a London or New York session in an up direction because we're looking for a higher price action. So the high probability rate has already occurred, but we're looking at this. Please, can you retake the APM? You want me to go over it again? I Please, can you retake the 8 p.m. opening price you showed on AU? I really need clarity on that. I'm going to have to kind of skip that question right now, fam. I'm going to keep going forward, though, but you would have to use the opening price. Like, if you look, the opening price here, too, it's the same thing. There it is. Look, that's the opening price. It's 8 p.m. Sorry, not 8 p.m. Sorry. It's not 8 p.m. It's 5 p.m. He got me saying 8 p.m. It's 5 p.m. right here. 5 p.m. I believe that's 5. 5 or 6 p.m. Opening price here. And price trades below it. Monday. Drops below 2 a.m.'s opening price. It trades up. Going back towards what? The high here. Or even the high after it, bro it broke it here. And price continues to trend. So there goes that lower time frame framework again. Once again, same thing, same framework. If we go into the kill zone too, I guarantee you, right? We got that. Ah, uh, we can't. We can't go down to the one minute. Ah, curse you, trading view. So you can see, look, it rates what sell some again here, and then it trades up. So you can see, look at the framework. How did I arrive to that narrative of wanting to be long for this week or for the next couple of days, just off of the high probability scalp opportunity? Following the swing point, swing high broken, higher swing low. Wait for that third candle to be broken. It was broken with this candle or this daily price action. This is the high that we want to run. Yes, it's ran early before the kill zone, but we still will be taking the odds for price to run back up into that high and further on. If you go back on the daily, this is what you're going to see. And if you need clarity, bro, all the Forex Fridays, we always begin. The weekly range review is the first topic. Every four, Go back and watch the last three Forex Fridays. It's always going to be the same thing. We talk about the weekly range review. That's for Alfred in the chat. And I'm not trying to like push aside your question, but I got to keep the Zoom going. You know what I mean? For those that are listening. That's your high, high probability scalp. Notice how after getting that buy confirmation, look how price continues to trend. So you could have found that long in London. And continue to hold it for, you know, maybe the next three days, the next four days before some top occurs or some swing high turns around and there's a retracement. So that's how you would find a high probability scalp. But like I said, this month was very interesting because at the beginning of this month, I was telling traders I'm looking for shorts. And I said I prefer price to go up and then go short. Let me see if I have it on my chart. Or is it GU? Because, like, I haven't changed the way I traded in the last three, four years. I have not traded. Look, look, this is the live broker, too. Right? I get ads that show a live broker, Forex.com. It's literally one of the rank number one U.S. brokers in the world. It's like one or two. Use it on TradingView. All right, it's a live broker. So if you're in the U.S., something you can consider. Let's see. Yeah, so I have... Let's see, I know I start drawing. Yep, there we go. I start drawing. Look, I always start drawing my little lines, man. I start drawing my lines. I start spec spec speculating what price is going to do. And at the beginning of the month, like I said, it's not like I'm a fortune teller, or I'm someone that knows how to read the future. I just know that the market is the same thing every single week, bro. Every single day, every single kill zone. It's, it's going to create liquidity. It's going to change trend. 
It's going to destroy liquidity. It's going to change trend. It's going to protect liquidity. It's going to change trend. It's going to continue continue trend. You can see I was drawing the scenario. Maybe we run the lows and then we go higher. Maybe we run if the lows, then we go higher. And I think I draw another scenario, right? I probably, I think I draw up and then down if my memory remembers. I guess not. I might have spoke about it. I did. Of course I did. Come on. I know myself too well. Price is either going to go up or go down. You guys see me do this for the last three months so so far of the year. And I do it in the daily tracking. I did that for almost the entire year. Almost. This is when things started getting busy and then we started acquiring land. Me and my business partner, like, I was inconsistent because I was, like, trying to figure out, like, funding, you know, where the farm's going to be, how we're going to sell the produce, where we're going to grow, getting the land worked and prepped to grow and stuff like that, greenhouse, et cetera, et cetera. So, that's when things started to fall off with my consistency, at least with the daily tracking for 2023. And, you know, life happens. And sometimes you get a little inconsistent and you find ways to get into the groove again or you move your life schedule around. It is what it is. It's life, bro. But, yeah. So you can see price going up and going down. Oh, this is your first time, fam? First time watching from Nigeria. Yo, shout out Nigeria. Yo, go... Check Forex Fridays, right? Go to the playlist. See if I can show you here. Share this tab. This is what I was showing. Sorry if you guys couldn't see my screen. This is what I was showing. Right? The beginning of the month. It's either going to go up or go down. I'd be drawing my lines every single time. I'm speculating. Or it's going to go down and then go up. And then maybe go back down. Right? I'm, draw I'm trying to paint a, a scenario for this month. And I'm using macro information, seasonal data, interest rate differentials, um, mm. higher time frame PDA rate, IPTA levels. And then I, I have a framework, I have frame. And then I said this. I know somewhere in the video I was like, where is it at? Somewhere here. I know I'm missing it. There it is. Right? I said it was going to either go up. And maybe continue going higher. And then I said, oh, or it's either going to go up and then continue and then maybe sell off again. And I was really banking on this zone. And I want it to happen where? In a premium. I wanted the price to probably go down, maybe buy below discount, then go back up above the March's opening price and then sell again. But instead, that's not what we got. We got this instead. And this is that same, this is that same area here, back up, down, up. And this is March's opening price. Where is it at? There goes the open of the month. Here. And there's April. Here. Look at how that month progressed. And look at all the other indications that I say. If you're going to be a buyer and you figure out the trend, you just buy after any down day. Look at this. It's a down day. That's an indication, a natural price indication. You don't need an indicator, bro. Take that stuff off your chart. That's a pet peeve of mine. I, I don't like looking at indicators, bro. Indicators do not help you. Does not help any beginner, right? I want to help all the beginners. I try to be beginner friendly as possible. Indicators are not beginner friendly. Down candle and an uptrend. You need to buy the next day. You're just going to have that probability of having a winner. Down candle, you need to buy the next day. Look at that. And eventually you come to the end of the month and the market's going to change trend. But look at that. Another down candle. What happens the next day? Up day. Another down candle, up day. Can't make this stuff up. Like, it's common sense after you figure it out. You're like, oh, damn. Market goes up. Why aren't why aren't traders just waiting to buy after a down day? I have no idea. The market is selling. Why aren't traders just waiting for an up day, then sell? Bro, you're going to put the probabilities on your side a lot more at a time. Way more than 50% chance. And based off of that higher time frame scalp opportunity, look what happens after that. Price continues to trend higher. So recap. Before we move on to the next, next, next topic, let's recap that again. We figured out that the trend, let's clear it off again, start over. Disregard everything on the left side of the chart, of course. If you're tracking trend, 
You're either going to plug and play the formula. And you'll keep plugging it until you get something. Until you start getting a trending environment. Swing high broken. That's bullish momentum. What do we have to wait for next? Higher swing low. Higher swing low. Price goes up. Higher swing low. Wait for the third candle to be broken. Here. This is the third candle. Got it. That third candle is broken by this candle. Now, it doesn't have to be the fourth candle. Don't start counting candles. One, two, three, four, five. Don't start doing that. It's not about counting the candles. Once you figure out this is the highest swing low, just look at the last candle in that swing point and wait for it to be broken. It could be tomorrow or it could be the following day. As long as the low is still intact and this swing low is still intact, you still have the idea. This is the high probability scalp. This candle here, because it ran that candle's high, this candle's high is your high probability buy stop raid. High probability buy stop raid, more specifically, because it's a buy setup. We're looking for a long the next day. How you find that long, A, any way means, right? Once price goes below 7 a.m.'s opening price, 2 a.m.'s opening price, maybe it goes below the Asian session open, whatever it is, or the Asian session low, you look to buy. Buy. There you go. Go long for the day. As soon as the candle opens, maybe just go long, right? Just a cookie cutter approach. And that's it. Now, if you take this idea without using the trend formula and you just keep looking at the swing points, just keep looking at the swing points, you will start to see you can find them a lot sooner than later. So one, two, three, right here. Let's take a look at this. Let's say we're not looking for confirmation of higher swing lows or higher swing lows. One, two, three. Third candle here. You're just waiting. Does does this candle get ran? No, it doesn't. Exactly what I was talking about. It may not be the next candle. Don't start counting one, two, three. Oh, it has to be the fourth candle. It doesn't have to be the fourth candle. It doesn't have to be the fifth candle either. You just want to see that candle's high ran without taking out the low. It got so close to it. Yes, it didn't take the low out. They were consolidating the market here for a couple of days, three days. The high is taking. So this is the high probability rate. This Friday, we're looking for a long. We're trying to see if price can get to this high. Whatever long setup we can try to get to this high is the high probability rate. We had some type of opportunity here. Now, I'm not saying it's going to be grand or it's going to be a large amount of profit, but the whole context of the idea of finding the direction short term just is based off of the swing points. It's just momentum. And you can see it even runs even higher if you're holding the trade or if you're not stopped out. And it probably most likely will continue that momentum in that direction. Then you start to see, oh, I can actually hold trades. And my intraday trades don't have to be so short. I don't have to scalp. I can actually grab 60 pips. I can actually grab 80 pips. I can start grabbing 100 pips. It actually becomes reality. So that is that topic. I'm going to move on to another. And you can see this on any pair. You can see this in stocks. You can see this in any asset class. Just study, 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 study. Remember, they're all rigged. Do not ever think for one second that this market is not fake and not rigged. Everything is rigged. Crypto is rigged. Gold is rigged. Oil is rigged. Commodities are rigged. Wheat, you know, feeder cattle, all that other stuff. Rig, 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 rig. Futures rigged. Everything's rigged. Forex rigged. All right. Pair correlation. So we're going to look at our recent IPTA. So our recent IPTA and what's going on. So we're going to share a little bit of insight of what I'm thinking and what the market is talking about. So correlations. I'm going to ask the questions for the chat so that you guys aren't bored and I'm engaging with you guys. If the dollar goes up, let's say for right now what it's doing. If the dollar goes down, what should any of the dollar crosses do? Should it go up or down? If the dollar goes down, should the dollar crosses go correct? No, no, if it goes down, yes, up, up. If dollar goes down, dollar should mm -hmm, correct up. Everything should be up. So, so I'm not confusing anybody, you know. If dollar goes down, EU, AU, GU, NU should all go up. That is a code. That is the principle of the market. It should go up. 
market symmetry, right? A symmetrical market, a market that is not non-symmetrical, is a market following code. So when it's symmetrical, that means we see gold going up and dollar going down. But right now you see that gold and dollar haven't been symmetrical since the beginning of the year. Gold for January, February, and March have been all been going up. Eventually, you will see probably the market go back into trend and following code. Or, like I said, last Forex Friday. Did I say last Forex Friday? No, I didn't. I said it in a random Zoom. I was telling people, take your chance to look up this theory called the milkshake theory. Look into the milkshake theory. When you get a chance, go on Google, type in the milkshake theory. The whole premise of that idea is that just a quick approach. Gold, dollar, and stocks are all going to go up in the same direction. And it's going to be a meltdown for every everybody else. Right? Only the U.S. is going to benefit. Every other country is going to go down. And everything, everything up is going to go up. So stocks, gold, and dollars are going to go up. And then stocks are going to crash first. It's going to be gold and dollar, neck and neck, standing to the end of the financial monetary policy. And then dollar is going to finally fail. And then gold's going to fail eventually. That's the end game, supposedly, by that theory, by the milkshake theory. And there's also many different spinoffs. But do your due diligence on it. It's a very interesting topic. I'm a very big nerd on it, too, you know, because it impacts my life, too. It impacts your life, too. It's important to know these things. So you could position yourself to put place place yourself in a better environment, you know, make better decisions investing in what the world is going to look like, et cetera, et cetera. So you can set your family up or yourself up. So look into that. The milkshake theory. Very interesting. It's called the milkshake. It's a blend of everything, you know. Um I'm telling you, like, look into it. It's a very interesting thing. I wouldn't tell you it if it wouldn't benefit you. And at least spark your mind, you know. Get those neurons in your head firing. Think, 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 think. Thinking man is a wise man. That's what my pops would always tell me, bro. He's like, D, if you don't think, bro, you're going to be broke. You're going to be poor. Think. Think. Use your brain. Think. Read books, you know. Get around people that are actually going to do things in their life. Change your environment. Change your space, bro. This, this stuff is bigger than trading. Swing low is broken. I want to see a swing high broken on EU or AU or GU. So let's put this side by side. Since we're looking at e, AU for this month, we did um, EU last month. I'm going to take everything off of AU. We're basically going to copy and paste it over. Cool. So when you look at it like this, we got a swing low broken for the DXY here. Price comes down, takes out a swing low. We can see here for AU, it takes out a swing high formation. So that's good. I like that the market is moving in market code. It's moving in symmetry. If dollar is going to take out a swing point, AU, GU, NU, they need to do the same thing. Let's take a look at NJ a little further. EU. Okay, EU. What? EU does what? It takes out a swing point, a swing high. And it's the same swing point that forms on the 26. So if you look on the left side of the chart, look at the DXY where my mouse is cruising, the 26. That's the swing low. And ironically, a swing high was formed on EU on that same day. So, you know, as EU was going down, dollar was going up. So you could already see the code there. And then price runs and takes out that same swing point that it formed on that same day together. It's got to be rigged. Let's look at GU. GU does the same thing. Let's go over to the 26. Look, there's a swing high that forms on the 26. And there's a swing low that forms on the 26. And they both run that same level at the 26. That's GU. New Zealand dollar, 26. Swing high too. Hmm. And even earlier, there was an earlier swing high that it runs here. You can see price created a fair value gap. And look at this. What's this? Same fractal entry idea. Long on that fair value gap. 
Now, it would be different, of course, because you're on the higher time frame. It wouldn't be a 15 pip stop loss or 15 pip TP. You're going to be using a hundred, hundreds of pips. You know, what's your most recent swing low or your most recent uh, previous daily low? That's what you'd be using. So it looks something like this. You'd be long here. If you're doing it based off of the daily, you'd be long here. Your stop loss, either below this previous daily low or below this swing low. And then what are you aiming for? Swing highs. Swing high formations. It was the same way I framed my projection off of the longs of the after this down candle. I went long after this down candle for NJ and long after the here. I went long on both sides. And my stop loss is literally that previous daily low or the low itself. Because the next candle trades open, I'm knocked in long on weakness. Then the next candle here on Wednesday knocks me in on strength. And in price here. And I was projecting what? Price to run to what swing high? This swing high. So I'm using the swing points as projections and TPs and stop losses for those swing trades and those projections or those position trades. Because it's my easiest way to frame my draw. Who wouldn't want to buy up to this point? Who wouldn't want to buy and hold up to this point? I would. And we'll see if that's respected. Now, as we stand right now, I would suspect that price is going to make a lower swing high for DXY. Now, we know the seasonal tendencies already for the DXY for April is bearish. It's supposed to make some type of short-term rally and short. Now, I'm not saying that this market is drawn to scale in the timing, but just looking at it in ideas, so some, some early short-term run up and then it goes short. But then when we look at Australian dollar, you can see that it's just going to run up. And then towards the end, it's going to make a top and sell. And already so far, that's what you're seeing. So we can see the seasonal tendencies could be playing out here. So let's go back to AU. AU. It's already making what? A potential higher swing low. This could be the low that's protected now. So there's no fear in losing now. So we start to frame. We start to tell ourselves, okay, if AU is going to go higher, and this is where we're taking our IQ and we're using and we're trying to an anticipate what the market's going to do. Let's say Monday opens and trades higher. It doesn't take out the low. Then we would say, okay, Friday, previous daily low or last week's Friday low, it's not going to get ran out. And it's going to trade higher. We could get a purge on this. We could still get a run on this sell side. And then maybe Wednesday trades up higher. And it, that's the higher swing low here. That would be a swing low that's higher. But we don't want that swing low to this one originally to be rated. And that's how we'd be looking at the market code. It's a very simple idea. Remember, they're opposite to each other. So one market is doing something, the other should be doing the other. If it's not, Odds are you are having or observing manipulation at its finest. Right? If you're seeing that the market is not making higher highs when a respected currency should be making lower lows or etc. And it's not following the symmetry, you know directly right there and then that the market makers are in the market and they're manipulating the orders. They have their hand on that certain currency pair that's not following the code. And right now, you can see the market makers are heavily inside of gold, heavily inside of DXY right now, because they're both not moving in code. They're both going up. So we know that they're being manipulated at its fineness. It has to be. If we take a look at NJ versus the DXY, because this is something that I'm looking, looking at personally, you can see it's following the same thing NU or GU or AU is doing. The yen crosses are correlated to the dollar crosses as well. I don't think a lot of people realize that. When NU goes up, NJ tends to go up. When EU goes up, EJ tends to go up. When G GU goes up, GJ tends to go up, etc., etc., right? You can keep going down the list of all the yen crosses. Dollar is more than likely going to look to push for this swing low that it just created. I want to see this low. Right here. 
So you're going to hear, hear me talk about this in the daily updates next week. We want to see if this low is rated to. We want to see price create a top here and go lower. Or maybe price goes up one more time and then it goes short because it could play games like that with us. And we would have to adjust, right? Or if any losses come within that time period or that frame, we take the losses and then we mitigate and we make it back and then we move forward into profit. So don't rush the daily draw. But what you're seeing right now is market symmetry. It's perfect right now. Don't get comfortable, though. And pay attention to what you're currently trading. Now, right now, I think what? That recent swing high that it formed, it's going to get there. It engineered that swing high to get there again in the near future. Pattern repeats. Gets to this one. Gets to this one. Gets, and it keeps creating ones that it keeps protecting. And what you're watching is bullish momentum. What you're watching is bearish momentum. So hopefully that makes sense, right? Very short and simple idea here. Don't have to go into deep details with that. It's a very straightforward confidence. If you have any questions at this point, please let me know and we can go over them. So if you have any questions, let me know because we are coming to the end. It is currently now 11.08 here in New York. And the weekend is just coming up, and I want to sleep. I love sleep. I love sleep. I love sleep. So let me know. Yes, you do have a question? Is that what you're saying in the chat? All right, let me know. I'll wait. I'll give you guys some time. If you have any questions, please let me know. SMT. Okay, SMT. What about SMT? Smart money tools, <laughs> S&T. What about smart money tools? Gold. What about gold? I got to do one thing at a time. Starting 8 p.m., Alfred. 8 p.m. New York Eastern Standard Time is when the Asian session starts. 8 p.m. New York Eastern Standard Time. Do we need bias for that? Oh, gold. Okay, yeah, I know what you're talking about now. Yeah. Do we need bias for that? For SMT, smart money tools? I see this happened many times, but I couldn't guess what we will do next. Okay, cool. There was a recent SMT that I was looking at. Dang, uh, let me think, 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 think. It was an SMT. Oh, it was definitely around the Asian session. Ah, oh, man, I wish I could show this side by side. Oh, I'm going to send you. An example in the chat, if I could remember it. I'm going to show you an example. I don't have it on the top of my head because I don't want to sit here looking like a fool looking for it. But I'm going to send you an example over this weekend of an SMT diversion and how that played out. And, and the signs that you can think of what the market manipulation is happening. And we're going to get to gold. When doing, if the look, what if the high falls on the 20-day high? You use that high. So here, see this? I use this one. So from here, going back to the 20-day here. Yeah, I'm going to show everybody in Telegram, in the Telegram channel. Here in the discussion chat. So if you're not in the discussion chat, just let me know if you need that link to get into the discussion chat. Because there's a broadcast channel and there's a discussion chat. Every broadcast channel has a discussion chat. There goes the 20-day high. I used it. You see how it was ran right here? 20-day look back if the high. April 1st high is ran here. Then it created a top and then it started selling lower. You got to up candle too. So you want to sell after up candles. So if, if the DXY is going to go lower, right? Remember what I'm telling you right now. If the DXY is going to go lower, sell after up candles. If EU or AU or G or NU is going to go higher, you need to buy after down candles. Remember those words. Can I assume the DXY? Yes, you can assume that too. From a higher time frame perspective, yeah, you can absolutely do that too. Right? The monthly trumps the weekly. The weekly trumps the daily. That's how it works. And the daily trumps the four hour. This is where you're going to find your trend. Daily, weekly, monthly. You can. The lowest I would ever go is daily. I'm not really going to go down to the four hour. I hardly talk about the four hour. 
there's other models that I use on the four hour that you guys are familiar with or, or, or heard me talk about. But daily, weekly, monthly is where I'm going to frame our context for a trend. And gold. Yeah, let's talk about gold. So before we go, let's pull it up. Gold NFP. This is the last thing. Last thing, last thing, last thing. And I'm going to head off to bed. And you guys are going to enjoy your weekend or whatever, your work day. And, and be safe. So 15 minute time frame. I'm gonna show you this gold NFP setup. Make things quicker here and here. The Asian model, the London model, and the New York model, they're all the same. It's just using a different dead zone. It's the same idea and framework, just using a different dead zone. This is south side. There's nothing different because people say, do you have a video for this and a video for this? I don't have an official video for the London model, but we talk about it so often here that pretty much most people know what it is. But if, you're, if you are new, don't be afraid to reach out to me and, and text me. Like, I'm, I'm going to DM right away, bro. You can direct message me, text me, whatever. Like, I will eventually get to your message. Try my best to get to all of them. At 7 a.m. We're not even going to look at the weekly opening price. We're just going to look at the kill zone opening price. I don't want to spend too much time. 7 a.m. Opening price. Cool. Got it. We got sell side here, too. This is also swing low. Watch what happens. Keep watching. Sell side taken. Cool. At this point, we would stalk the setup. But we know NFP is the event that's going to happen at. So let's just go down to the one minute and just observe. Observe. Same framework, same context. That's the dead zone. We don't trade here. We're using this time period to trade. What's this time period? 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. New York Eastern Standard Time. This is 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. New York Kill Zone ICT material. Looking for a fair value gap. After breaking the sell side, I need a fair value gap that runs right there. Right here. See it? It's quick. Let me measure here. Right before the news. Everything just gave the same. Every market just gave, at least for Forex, gave the same fingerprint right before NFP was just about to drop. Am I saying it's going to be like this every single NFP? Week or NFP day? No, but it's going to be something along the lines like this. Play it forward. That's NFP right there. Eight. No, it's not NFP. There's NFP right there. Wow. So it took out sell side. Potentially looking for a long setup. Long comes in, and we go. And we get stopped out. So. Is what it is. But look at the levels, though. I want you to observe how it's forming around these levels. Can't be random. It's too specific in price and where it's going. So once you have this, you can never unsee it now. You can't tell me you can't frame setups for NFP anymore. You got it. Sometimes it overshoots. Sometimes it overshoots. It spikes up and then it goes short. Or vice versa. It spikes down really hard and goes goes long. It's going to wipe people out. It's going to wipe a lot of people out. But when it's really clean, like like we saw with like AU, like when it's really clean, ah, man, it's great. Like this, looks just like gold, but it gave the entry correctly. It, it ran buy side first, then went short. Gold did not. You see how gold went to sell side first? Gold did this. Gold went down, up, then down. AU did not do that. AU immediately knew we're going to do buy side first, then go short. So if you were following it for gold, technically you would have taken a loser there. So like I said, so draw out the card of which pair you select or what market you select. Someone that would have selected AU would have been happy. 
someone that would have selected gold might have been a little upset because they knew that NFT was coming around and they were looking for a long and they still get stopped out. But then AU performed picture perfect. Like, thinking about that, little to no drawdown on NFP, man, that's unheard of. <laughs> that's unheard of. Little to no drawdown on NFP is crazy. Most people twin trade. They'll do some type of twin trade kind of thing. Like they'll find a consolidation that forms just before NFP. And I don't like I don't really like the model, but they'll place like a buy. Yeah, like a buy limit here. Sorry, buy stop here and a sell stop here. And they'll wait for one side to be broken right before the news. And then whichever side it breaks, they're gonna hold it into the news and see if they win or not. Yeah, gold and DXR went up together. Yeah, it didn't work so all this time. Yep. Didn't work really crazy, right? It didn't give that whiplash, like, ah, and then spike down. It was pretty clean. So, more food for thought. All right, folks? Appreciate you guys, yo. I appreciate you guys. Stay consistent. You know, the industry is tough. Remember, you are in a space where not a lot of people are successful. It is very difficult to find success. Even when you think you're on the road to success, there's going to be a lot of hurdles. Even if it's not within trading, your life will challenge you. Things will, things start going your way, and sometimes life just tends to throw a lot of hurdles challenging you, you know? And who knows? Maybe it's the higher beings just trying to see if you really, like, stand the test of time, you know? And it only builds character. So enjoy your weekend. We're going to hit the charts back again fresh on Monday. Peace.